Welcome to PM Express. There's fresh evidence emerging to support that long-held perception that corruption has become endemic at Ghana's ports and Havel. You recall earlier this week, the special prosecutor, Kisi Ejabing, retrieved over a million cities in revenue shortfall from the La Bianca group of companies. That's a firm wholly owned by a member of the Council of State, Eunice Asamahini, who also is being cited for influence peddling. That aside, the Office of the Special Prosecutor, as we do know it, since the release of these findings, has faced some stiff opposition from both private sector and, in fact, some officials of the Ghana Revenue Authority who claimed that the audits of the custom valuations by the Office of the Special Prosecutor is born out of malice. Even before that dust settles, the civil society group Imani Africa is tonight wading into the controversy with a new report detailing what they describe as bribery, corruption, extortion, chronism, and patronage, if you want to call it as such, of state-sided actors throughout the port value chain of the Ghana Revenue Authority. So here on PM Express tonight, we're simply unpacking the anatomy of port corruption as we explore with key stakeholders tonight the best approach in plugging the revenue leakages. So let's get to it, shall we? Uh, obviously, we know that this is all stemming from the La Bianca um, corruption saga, which is just the tip of the iceberg. By the end of the conversation, of course, we'll have Imani demonstrate to us what the true picture may be uh, at Ghana's ports and harbors. But let's start off with the background to the La Bianca case. We do know that the Office of the Special Prosecutor retrieved uh, a little over one million Ghana cities from this said wholly owned Ghanaian firm. That was the first step by the Office of the Special Prosecutor. But beyond that, the amount, as we know, represents a shortfall in import duties, which La Bianca was supposed to have paid uh, per the revaluation, re if you want to call it of sort, that was done by the Office of the Special Prosecutor. Then fast forward, the Special Prosecutor uh, started facing stiff opposition from some officials of the Ghana Revenue Authority. In, in fact, those at the very top of that organization, specifically at the customs division. We heard from the likes of Ken Odama, who happens to be at the helm of affairs there at the customs division. Uh, he gave a clap back to the special prosecutor, indicating clearly uh, that for him, the findings by the office of the special prosecutor were, quote, hollow and act actuated by malice. These were the words of Ken Odama, and I want you to take that seriously, uh, because we'll reflect something to you shortly. Beyond that, the claims, according to Ken Odama, is actually stemming from some disgruntled officers of the Ghana Revenue Authority who he failed to second to the Office of the Special Prosecutor. And in the end, they ended up there and are obviously attacking the Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority. Uh, just when he landed on these statements and commentary began on this, the Ghana Revenue Authority uh, then issued a statement. We'll put that statement out shortly. But for Ken Odama, one of his problems as well uh, has uh, got to do with the issue and the challenge that the special prosecutor actually uh, sent out to the Ghana Revenue Authority. Mind you, the Office of the Special Prosecutor had then directed Ghana Revenue Authority uh, to put up an integrity plan for the exercise of the customs advanced rulings. So we also got a sense that the Office of the Special Prosecutor had wanted to carry out a complete audit way back to 2017. So Ken Odamwa decided to respond. He indicated and drew that challenge back to the Office of the Special Prosecutor, indicating that he would ensure that his officers are, first of all, protected against what he describes as intimidation. And beyond that, he's open to any kind of investigations that may follow. Right after that, and that was just coming through at the start of the week, we heard from the Ghana Revenue Authority uh, just Obviously, disassociating themselves from uh, the comments that were made by Kenel Damwa and indicating clearly that the statements that Kenel Damwa was making was actually made, quote, in his personal capacity, and they do not convey, as the Ghana Revenue Authority is pointing out, the opinion of the board and management of the GRA. And that's a very instructive statement, just to put out uh, clearly that the GRA will go out and plug all of the revenue leakages that the Office of the Special Prosecutor is talking about and implement plans that will ensure integrity at our ports. Just when the dust was settling, then the finding came through. What we're learning from Imani Africa tonight, indicating in their fresh reports about port governance, 
here in our country that they've made some key findings. So let's get to some of the findings. They're talking, first of all, about economic fraud, or what you may want to call the custom type of fraud, which they claim is very prevalent. That word, you need to be on the lookout for it, at the Tema port. And then they go ahead to talk about the nature, uh, the form it actually takes. They talk about the fact that under declaration of imports, is supported by the increased undervoicing and issues of utilization of fake invoices, which they claim is being um, the, the norm or, or the game of the day uh, at our various ports. And they claim that is happening simply because of the same problem that the Office of the Special Prosecutor pointed out when he released the report on La Bianca and some officials at the Ghana Revenue Authority, indicating that there is this big issue about influence peddling. So Imani is also uh, going ahead to point out that that trend appears to be the norm at our various ports, and not just in the case of La Bianca, because for them, key of the f their findings is that quasi-political actors and politically exposed persons, such as uh, Mr. Sumahini, as uh, the Office of the Special Prosecutor's report is describing here as, poli as, as a politically exposed person, uh, leverage their excessive influence and interference of the executive in port administration to engage in corruption and manipulate to facilitate illegal business. That's what the report is also pointing out to us. And beyond that, they're talking about a syndicate uh, which we also have at our ports who are engaged in this uh, act that we're talking about. But what's more triggering is that they're not just engaged in the habit of evading tax or whatever it is that you want to describe it, they are also involved in the illicit trade of drugs and some other issues that Imani would uh, further explain to us. So that's the whole story in terms of what's happening when it comes to bribery, cronyism, corruption, and illegal firearm trafficking at the ports. And that's why we're where, to, where we are today, looking at the anatomy of port corruption. Thank you.